Who owns you? A monk asked me once. Buddhist monks are funny in that way. They don't aim to teach. They aim to awaken that dull mind of ours by sometimes pulling the rug under it. Few words, subtle. Who owns you? Smiling, he asked. I don't understand, I said. In my mind, I was thinking I'm nobody's fucking slave. In his calm voice, usually I ask what owns you, but who must be considered? I will give you a minute, he said. All the 16-year-old me could come up with that moment was how strict my Sri Lankan mother was and how I had no freedom. (laughs) That was many, many, many moons ago. I still keep finding answers to that question at 41. Before we talk about the answers, let me create the background for you to work with. Imagine an existence where someone owns you. History will provide enough context for you to work with. If it triggers you to do that, imagine being a prisoner. Everything about you is controlled. You would do routine things to sustain your bodily existence, but everything else is at someone else's whim and mercy. Imagine the animals and the birds whose purpose stolen away, sitting in a cage gazing at a sky they can never be under. People who cage animals used to be a hard trigger for me. It's very common in Sri Lanka. But when you look at their human, living in a big city, they gate kissing the front door. 10 feet of concrete walls for protection and all sorts of gates. They are in a cage themselves. So I moved to a foothill of a mountain in Gelio, rural Sri Lanka. I saw this glass box of a house with views to die for. I immediately got it viewed, rented and moved in within two weeks. I was stone silly throughout the experience. I ended up living in a jungle with wild bows, type of a big cat that Lankans call Handundivia, and a variety of reptiles, with my Dubai race dogs and my rescue cat called Magic, who thinks he's a dog. They were no help. Oh, and an abandoned burial grounds next door. <laughs> The shit that petrifies me, snakes and their dudes. I immediately knew another layer of what owned me. Fear. It was in my head and I was its prisoner. And the worst kind because it went everywhere with me. Even serial killers get to go to the toilet in peace but I couldn't I was scared of snakes being inside the toilet bowl and shit so there was no escaping it it was in my head my only choice was to face it so I set off on a journey to be free from my own head my own fears my own limitation and the prisons I put myself in mentally, the worst kind. Every prisoner would get their sentence and they can come out. But for you, it's like a death sentence. I started publishing my dance videos two years ago. I danced for 30 some years without anyone seeing it. I had to free myself from Sri Lankan traditions that's imposed on women. And lately, I've been trying to free myself from my ego, the defense mechanism I created 
by adapting to acceptable behaviors that was rewarded from the environment from my childhood all that oh you're such a good girl nonsense it's fun at times and at times it's an absolute shit truck but it's always been for my highest good may you be free and to receive each other again <laughs>